Of course, Chris Mack played for then assistant coach Skip Prosser for a couple years at Xavier, and Quan Four makes it 4 zip. Now 0 for his last 14 from deep over his last five games. Quan Four to the basket, banks it in, 6 nothing. Cardinals. Timeout, Danny Manning. Having especially recognized it coming off of that tough loss, he wanted to see aggression from his every second he's on the floor, the reason why he leaves the Cardinals in minutes played per game. Childress, good look, way off. There's the first offensive rebound for the Deeks. Jalen Horde sticks it back in. Nice anticipation. Quan four ahead to Williams. Now is solely about the energy and effort game has been about the Cardinals in comparison to the young Wake Forest team. Olivier Saar gets two inside. Good pass from Childress. Gino Gaudio has spoken fondly about the good memories at Wake. Jalen Ward attacks the rack for the Deeks. And Dino Gaudio is an elite level competitor. And of course, he has emotional ties to this building. But more importantly, he wants to walk out of here with the win. To coach here at Wake Forest, and in my opinion, did a pretty good job, if I have to say so. He did a very good job as Isaiah Musius hits his first shot. And Brandon Childress played 40 minutes against Boston College. He doesn't come out much, second in the ACC in minutes per game. And that's one of the areas where you've got to be concerned if you're Wake Forest is he. And Wake was unexpected whether or not they'd have Torrey Johnson available tonight. Capable of manning the position just a couple of minutes to give Brandon Children a break. But without Torrey Johnson, it mentioned 40 minutes a game for Brandon, and this is another game where he may not come out. Seven of nine shooting. And I've asked you know, the coaching staff a lot of questions regarding V.J. King. And of course, he came out of high school as a McDonald's All-American. McMahon as, for three. And McMahon knocks down the three. Virginia Tech leading at Miami at the half tonight by seven. As Childress fires too strong off the glass. And Lake Williams didn't know where he was going with it. Found money for Shondi Brown. Do the other things, I think it will help his shots go through and have him more engaged in the basketball game. Great pass, Ward to Williams. In this level of shape last year as a freshman, and more importantly, for the way that Chris Mack uses his four men, Ward was more so of a small forward a year ago. Cardinals back up by 11. As Childress navigates, this is Sharon Wright Jr. on the attack, right at Williams. There's Brown on the stick back for the D. If he's doing the other intangibles that help his team win. Snap to two and a half minute scoring drought from the field. Ryan McMahon. Around the perimeter, it swings. Sutton takes it, makes it. Such a great record in the Dean Dome, you should retire right now. You, you took that as a joke? <laughs> I, I, I think he knows that he's not going to stay perfect in Chapel Hill forever. Saar flips it. Williams takes care of it for the Cardinals. Ahead to Wara. Oh, goodness. That was way too easy. Shot won't fall for Darius Perry. Getting some minutes tonight after not playing was late for a shoot around before the Saturday game against Pittsburgh 11th coming into the ACC preseason but this team has talent and the fact that Chris Mack brought in three grad transfers two of those guys are actually starting right now the ACC schedule that they played thus far the win at North Carolina was a big surprise but outside of that I don't think there's anyone that they shouldn't have beaten DC schedule so far of the 15 ACC teams with that said they still have played the third most difficult schedule in the country overall. You're talking about a team that's had their offensive production carried with them, and defensively now they're really starting to recognize what Chris Mack is asking for them on a nightly basis, but Jordan War continues to score. Begins the second half with 999 points in his college career between Richmond and Louisville. And there's Dwayne Sutton, who had a great freshman year at UNC Asheville. They just need something good to go their way, but more importantly, they've got to try to find a way to force that. Oh, what a swat. Malik Williams sends it back. Shot clock at seven. Brandon Childress for two. Foul in the first half, taking him out of action, definitely didn't help the Deeks on the offensive end of the floor at all. Clock winding down, Wara buries the three. Moore's ability to get his shot off quickly. You have to be there when the ball is on, when he arrives to make sure you run him off the line. Two for Brown. Not going to be comfortable with this, but 
great talking to him and Dino Gaudio. And I actually caught Justin Gray in the tunnel before the game. Talking about the two-on-two games. Yep. LB and I, Dennis Wolf, we used to go at it. And, of course, those games could get, you know, pretty fiery, to say the least. Gaudio is very close with Chris Steele. Spends a lot of time with him in the summer, working his camps, etc. But, uh, yeah, I think Chris might have got the advantage in that one. I'm not sure if it's Wake beating NC State or Georgia Tech winning at Syracuse. I, I would definitely go with Louisville over North Carolina. And because of the way that they did, that is also, remember, coming off of a loss where they went on the road and lost at Pittsburgh in overtime. And to be able to respond that way, Chris Mack had to be extremely proud of his team. Enoch trying to back down. Okay, K takes the turnaround and puts it in. Not getting into the NCAA tournament, but a long, you know, year for the Cards. And again, you, they went through a lot. They've gone through a lot over the past couple of seasons in their program. Playmaking down the stretch. Sutton's three rims out. And at that point, you're thinking, okay, maybe not on the road, but Wake at home, they could be dangerous. So, Thursday, Saturday, or you know whatever it may be, Thursday, Sunday turnaround to where they've had to play those back-to-back -back games. B.J. King in transition, slams it home. Knows that he needs these guys moving forward, so he can't sit them over there for the remainder of the game, and they lose confidence. So right now it's about getting back, building some confidence, and finding something that will help them moving forward. But you also have to take into consideration, this is a good Louisville team. I mean, what they're doing to Wake Forest right now, they did to North Carolina in the Dean Dome. Since then, the Deacons are 34 of their last 147 from three. Well, 35 of 148. It was a nine-team league, and you had that true round robin. When you look at the schedule now, obviously it was 16 games, now 18 games and moving to 20 games right now with the unbalanced schedule you don't have that you know i picked the university of north carolina to finish with the second best record in the acc this season much with three and a half minutes remaining what what message does that send to you well i don't know if it sends a message as much as it is you know recognizing with the big game coming up they're in the top 20. Okay. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> you didn't want to make the count. <laughs> Coach Mac Dino Gaudio getting a win on their return to Lawrence Joel Coliseum and not overlooking the Demon Deacons, giving them much chance at all to compete in this game.